What's going on YouTube? Outdoors with Tim. Uh, out here in the garage, getting a little, uh, getting a little something done, I'll say that. I feel pretty good. I've had a couple of good days. I thank y'all for the prayers, um, but I uh, don't want to keep y'all too much, but I'm, I'm building a little single cage, um, let's say a, a quail cage or maybe a, a cage for, a brooder cage for chicks uh, for a very, very nice lady. Um, and her husband, uh, they have seen the work I've done in the past. So I decided to make a little video because this is going to be a simple build on how to build a uh, chick brooder or quail brooder uh, for bobwhite quail or paternix quail or whatever kind of quail. But uh, pretty simple build and I want to bring you all along. So, all right, some of the material we'll be using is uh, these uh, two by twos. You can purchase these at Lowe's. Uh, uh, the lady uh, that is having me build this cage uh, purchased all this material and I offered up to uh, use my uh, my craftsmanship and my skills to, to build her uh, this cage. So um, I just want to bring you guys along and uh, hopefully uh, I'm videoing this on my phone by the way. So hopefully my phone has enough space to make a good video for all of you. Uh, this is kind of a spur of the moment thing. Plus I miss all of you. And just want to bring you along and uh, put, put a little more content on my channel and uh, be able to take the time and view the comments and uh, reach back out to you guys. Um, however, I am feeling pretty good. My eyesight uh, is, you know, still does that thing, you know, double vision, single vision, good vision, whatever. Um, so try not to stare at the same thing too much too long and it doesn't bother me as much. So uh, anyway, um, anyway, back to the project. So. Uh, the overall height of this cage is going to be 36 inches tall, um, and the actual living space is going to be 37 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and did I miss something else? 37 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and 16 inches tall, uh, the living space. So uh, the birds won't have much room to jump up and hit their head, break their necks, that kind of, all the horror stories you ever heard about quail. Um, and if she's using chicks... It'll do great. Um, this thing will hold about uh, 10 to 12 uh, adult size quail. Um, and as far as chicks, you know, two day, three day old chicks, it'll hold them for about 15 to 18 days, um, maybe a little longer, depending on what size chick she'll have, uh, and up to 20 chicks. So, it, it, and it's just something that when people are doing their growing season early, that they would move this into a, a garage where they can stay warm or maybe even put it in their house or on the back covered back porch that's enclosed. So they can keep a closer eye on their chicks. Um, but this is, it's just a simple little build and I just want to bring you guys along. So, all right. So, uh, first is first. We got a piece of two by two here. We want to get our tape measure and I use a pen to write on this because this is treated wood and pen writes on just about any piece of treated wood I've ever seen. So, We'll cut uh, the leg at 36 inches. We'll need four of those at 36 inches. And um, I'll turn you over here to the saw. I use the miter saw for everything. It's probably the only saw I'm going to be using. I'll pull it down, make sure I get on my mark. Doesn't have to be real perfect, but we do need it to be on the mark. Okay. Keep your saw down until your blade quits turning. I mean, you can do what you want, but... I have uh, seen pieces of wood come flying out when you pull that saw blade up early. Um, save this piece. This is the short piece uh, left over from our 36 inch piece. We will get our 21 inch pieces out of this. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So we got that one out the way. And I'm knocking tools over behind you. All right. So now we can take the short piece here we just cut off from the 36 inch piece and we will mark it make sure my tape stays down we will mark it at 21 inches and we will cut four of these four we'll end up four for the outside framing and then we'll cut two additional for the inside uh, for bracing and I'll, I'll show you that later in the video but let's go ahead and cut this one at 21 inches get on our mark Remember to hold that saw down. This little piece right here, I'm telling you, I've, I've had it happen before. 
you pull that saw blade up and that thing's still spinning at them high, high rated RPMs, and this thing comes flying out, and you can have the safety glasses on, whatever you want. It may not hit you in the safety glasses, it might hit you somewhere else or just take off past your head, but it's uh, just always a good safety tip. Keep that down, uh, you know, until that saw blade's done spinning. Be safe with these power tools because any of you know, if you've messed with power tools enough, <laughs> I mean, the craziest things happen. But, uh, all right, so we're going to cut another one at 21. Get the mark lined up here. Check it. Okay. All right. All right. So, 21 inches. And I'll bring y'all back on in just a minute, okay? So, uh, when I get other things laid out, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Thanks for watching, guys. Outdoors with Tim how to build a uh, quail or chick brooder. All right, guys, we're back. All right, so we have our four 36-inch long legs laying flat on a little makeshift work table here. And what we want to do is from the very top of our build, our cage, we're going to mark an inch and a half, uh, roughly an inch and a half. That'll be the top runner of where our 21 inch piece will go across to conjoin each side. Then we want to come down and mark 16 on center and that will be the middle brace. So we'll take our speed square, carpenter square, whichever you like to call it, and we'll make a mark making sure that all your evens are straight and square with each other because when you make this mark you want them all to be the same. So, alright, so we have that and we have that. Okay, so now we can remove these out of the way. Um, make a little space on our workbench. Put our pencil in a safe place. Um, the type of screws I'm going to be using are the 8x3s. Um, these are like a, a power trim screw. Uh, they work good in your impact uh, drill or regular drill. They do come with a, uh, a size 10 bit. Uh, I recommend you get an extra bit if you're going to be doing a lot of this because those bits do wear out pretty quick so um and i already have an open container with a bit in there and i believe the correct size for that bit is a yeah it's a t10 bit okay um but i'm going to use some screws that i already have out and uh that are opened and what i'll do is i'll take my drill and I will, st and this wood uh, with these smaller screws that you don't have to pre-drill these holes. Uh, these screws work perfect. It does not split the wood. What you want to do is put these screws right in the center of your mark. And I'll bring you closer in just a second to show you, because that's where your 21-inch pieces will be right in the center of that, and you will get a nice square. Uh, configuration to your build. Uh, so let me get a couple extra screws in my hand here. Oh, just drop one on the floor. I'll uh, pick that up shortly. Ooh. Yeah, feeling pretty good, guys. Uh, went to the doctor. Uh, changed my medicine around a little bit. You know, where I was taking the same amount in the evening than I was in the morning. Um, and I think I'm feeling a difference already on how I feel through the day. Uh, definitely the headaches are minimized now, which is great. I'm sure my wife will be coming out here shortly just to check on me. Um, she is doing a super job, guys. And I have not been the easiest person to deal with, and I'm not afraid to tell you that, but she, she deserves... If there's an award that a husband can give her wife, I would give it to her. And she's been awesome. But um, I'm just glad I could get out here with a little bit of energy today and bring you guys along on this, uh, on this little project that I'm doing for this nice lady and nice man. Okay, so uh, let me take you guys off the mount. So you'll see how I got the, the lines. That's where you want to put your screws, guys, okay? Okay. Um, just put them right in there because this is where your 21-inch pieces are going to go in at right here, okay? 
I might have messed up right there. I think I did. I was supposed to go to the center over here and the, to the bottom of that mark. Now I got ahead of myself. At the bottom of that mark is where my two by two was going to be. So I'll go back and fix that. No, no issue there. But this is correct. All right, so let me put you all back on tripod mode here. And just let me back out these four screws and uh, we'll get back on track where we were. Thanks for watching, guys. Outdoors at TM. Boy, that's all dust all over me. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back here at the uh, miter saw. Now I'm going to cut the pieces for uh, how wide the cage is, uh, not how deep it is, because it's only 24 inches deep. When you reach in, it's 24 inches deep. But the width of the cage is going to, well, this piece we're cutting is 37 and a quarter, which should put us around 41 quarter, 41 and a half. Uh, don't quote me on the math, but somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's because we have a galvanized uh, clean-out tray that's going to slide in under the uh, galvanized hardware cloth uh, that these birds will be uh, standing on. So when they poop, it falls through the, the uh, hardware cloth and onto the tray. And then the tray slides out for easy cleaning. So uh, here we go. Um, let's uh, go ahead and get our mark at 37 and a quarter. And we'll cut four of these, okay? That's all you need of these to do a single stack uh, cage, okay? So let's make sure we get our piece of wood all the way to the backstop on the miter saw. And always keep your blade down until it's done turning, guys. All right, and save this piece because you will need this later. And it's better to cut that up than it is a whole piece. Um, so in just a minute, I'll finish cutting the rest of these and I'll bring you back on and show you some more of the assembling process for the single stack brooder cage. All right, so we just want to line up these 30, what did I say? <laughs> oh, I forgot what my measurement was on these, I want to tell you all right. Yeah, 37 and a quarter. Uh, this is the pieces that give the cage its width so I'm going to line it up the best we can here perfect so let me see if I can uh, show you what we got here take you off the tripod all right guys so essentially what we did was we made a just pretty much a square okay so in here is the living space um, Right here will be uh, two more 21 inch uh, pieces and I believe I already cut them. Yeah, they will go here and here and uh, then your hardware cloth will go across here and then you will have two more 37 inch pieces. So you'll need 30, 37 and a quarter inch pieces. One to go here under the bottom and one to go under here from here all the way across. There will be an inch gap between here and the other 37 and an inch quarter all the way across and on the front. And your clean out tray will slide in there. And that keeps your clean out tray from falling. And, uh, but you guys stay tuned because um, I'm going to bring you along on the rest of it. I just, I just got a lot of the fastening uh, part of it done. But the interesting part is, is fixing to come and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So I hope you uh, will stay tuned to the channel, Outdoors with Tim. Stay tuned, it's more coming. All right, so now we're working on the final attachment on the uh, support for the uh, clean-out tray. And uh, I'll show you. Yeah, I know it looks kind of disoriented right now. But, uh, show you in just a minute. I use these as a spacer to keep my consistent space for the clean-out tray to slide in on uh, both sides of the uh, so what you're looking at right here this is actually the bottom which will be on the floor and the top so this is the living space so I've got the cage upside down right now but uh, stay tuned I'll bring you back on and it'll make sense all right guys so this is pretty much uh, the design of this uh, this brewer cage uh, like I said, um, these are 37 and a quarter inches wide. The center pieces and the end pieces 
deep or 21 inches. And this is a galvanized uh, clean out tray uh, that you would take out. You know, you, of course, when you're using this, you put a little of uh, sawdust or wood shavings on it. Makes it for easy cleaning. Um, these uh, are inexpensive. You can purchase these. These are drip pans from AutoZone, O'Reilly's, um, Advance. Any part store has these. And uh, if you make those, uh, these pieces here, 37 and a quarter, 37 and an eighth or something like that, give or take. I, I put these at 37 and a quarter. You have plenty of room for this pan to work its way in without any issues. And uh, on the back of the cage will be uh, enclosed wood um, just to keep manure off of uh, the wall. Uh, or, you know, if it's pushed up against the wall or whatever. The sides uh, usually are covered in wood um, or wire depending on what the customer wants. I am going to most likely uh, do wood sides on these and uh, hardware cloth screened and closed on the front with a, uh, a door and then the hardware cloth here on uh, where the birds will be walking. Um, there'll be plenty of room to put a 16 inch feeder and waterer in here or some people even use the uh, J style outside uh, the cage feeders where they just hang on the outside of the cage and there's just a little part that goes inside for the birds to eat feed or whatever or some people use uh, automatic waterers in a five gallon bucket but um, y'all stay tuned because we're not done with this build but this is just to give you an idea of where we are on, on the build thanks for watching outdoors with tim we're in the garage it's a little cluttered but we're making it happen thanks for watching guys all right guys we're uh we're back so what i did was went ahead and measured my wire i pretty much rolled it out the hardware cloth and i got the corners cut each corner cut to fit you know around uh this here and uh now i'm in the process of stapling it and um the best advice i can give you is it's common sense, just you kind of figure it out, but I always start in the middle. Uh, you know, of course, tap down one end so it doesn't come back and attack you. Um, and I'll tell you, cutting the ends and getting these things cut, you know, the notch them around each one was a task for me because my eyesight was trying to really focus on this wire. Uh, definitely tricky for me right now, but hey, I got through it. Um, but yeah, just uh, tack down one end so it doesn't attack you cut you up too much and then um, work from the out or the inside out is you could stretch your wire and get it tighter um, definitely don't want a bunch of uh, rolls in it um, it's looking pretty good so um, I would recommend maybe get a screwdriver uh, when you get to the end so you can kind of uh, get some leverage on it and, and maybe tighten it up just a little bit but uh, it's coming together quite nice so I'm gonna go ahead and start stapling it um, this electric staple uh, gun has definitely been a lifesaver uh, as far as nailing down hardware cloth, that's for sure. Um, inch and a half, up to inch and a half staples, it will put down. And uh, I've had no issues with my staple gun. This is. Uh, Make sure your safety's pointed all the way down or it won't function for you. But uh, this has been a great, great staple gun here. So I'll bring you back on once I get this stapled in and uh, show you more about the enclosure and the final finish of this build, okay? Hey guys, thanks for watching Outdoors with Tim. Uh, I appreciate the, the views, the comments, guys. Like and share my videos. Uh, also, remember me, uh, keep praying. Um, we, uh, we got a lot going on, and, uh, you know, I know God's got a plan, so thank you all, uh, but y'all stay tuned. Alright guys, um, so we're back. 
Now we're working on the dimensions and the construction of the door. Um, I've, what I've got here is two pieces that are 17 and three quarters. That's how wide the door is going to be. Um, the door uh, will be approximately somewhere around, I think it's uh, 10, 11, 12, about 13 and a half inches uh, tall. Uh, 16, I'm sorry, 16 and a half inches tall. Uh, the door will be when it's fully opened. Um, so what I'm doing is bringing you along on just simple construction on how to get the door framed uh, and square. Uh, let me get my carpenter square, uh, framing square, speed square. Uh, we'll be using that to make sure that our door is square. So when we put the wire on, it looks good and it fits in its place. So, uh, let's set one of those out the way. Uh, this is a 10 and 3 quarter inch piece of 2x2. Two two. Uh, so, what I'll do is get that out the way there and uh, start fastening this together. I like to make sure my door is going to be square, though. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll just I'll get it started. How about that? And then we'll check for squareness. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. Nothing, uh, nothing rocket science about it, I guess. But you know, in case somebody really wants to know, uh, this is how I do the doors, and uh, pretty simple. Make sure uh, you guys are in frame here. <laughs> here we go. All right. I hate for me to do something and then you guys not be able to see the whole, you know, effects of getting it together, I should say. <laughs> oh, let me tighten this one up right here. Now, this one might be a little out of frame, but I'm just snuggling it up. Yeah, I'm just snuggling it up. Yeah. Whew, I'm glad I'm done with that hardware cloth. That was, that was really messing with my eyes. <laughs> You know, I told you guys I can stare at something, but I got to look away. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a task. <laughs> Just snugging that one up. And get this corner here. And uh, I haven't been checking for square, but my ends are pretty cut flush. Flush cut, I should say. And I think... Uh, I think as far as square, yeah, there's uh, there's no daylight in there, guys. Uh, doing doing good. So we got a good straight uh, frame for a door. Now, what I'll do is I'll come back. I'll go to my miter saw and I'll cut some 45s and put one here, one here, and one here, and it'll make this door just beautiful. So that way I have something to not only when I staple the wire, the hardware cloth here and here. I'll have it, you know, on the uh, the uh, 45 uh, corner supports, which are really make this door uh, very stir sturdy and uh, open and closing. A lot of use. It'll last a long time. Y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna get those 45s cut. And there you have it, guys. We've got the 45s cut uh, in the corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, two more cut. Put them here and one here. And you'll see the holes uh, where the screws go in at. They're very flush. So when this door shuts, uh, there won't be any issues uh, hanging up or anything. Um, so this door shut with no issue at all and open with no issue at all. So that's it right there. Nice little door. I'm going to go ahead and cut two more 45s. And there we have it, guys. We have all the 45s in. We'll put the hardware cloth over this. There'll be two hinges. Um, I believe the door is actually going to swing to the left, and there'll be a barrel latch here. And uh, this will go on the cage here in just a few minutes. And then we'll add the top and the sides and the back. And uh, this uh, quail brooder cage, chick brooder, will be complete. And I'll show you guys finished uh, product after uh, I'm done with everything. I really want to thank each and every one of y'all for watching Outdoors with Tim, the channel, following all the videos, uh, for all the comments, the shares, the likes. 
Um, I would like to see more of the 3,200 and something subscribers that I have in the channel. Uh, I would like to see them start start participating more, uh, like sharing the videos. Uh, that, that would help me a lot, guys. Um, uh, drop a comment. Um, I also have a video coming up of some of the projects that I have worked on in the past. And because I was in the hospital and dealing with uh, the pituitary uh, tumor and uh, going back and forth to doctors has really slowed me up. From uh, even showing you any of that, but I really uh, am looking forward to showing you some of that. So y'all stay tuned, and uh, I'll bring you back on in just a minute, guys. Thanks for watching. Outdoors with Tim out here in the garage. And there you go, YouTube. It's uh, 36 inches tall, 40, 37, 41 inches wide uh, from outside to outside, 37 and a quarter inches inside. And then it has the clean out tray. So I'll show you how it looks when you uh, when you open up. So uh, open up the door. And uh, of course, there you go. So all that living space in there. No deal. And then, of course, the clean out tray. Put your wood shavings or sawdust on here. Catch all the manure. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'll give you a little side view of it, I guess. <laughs> I'm doing, doing my best out here. Got this, uh, this cage done, a uh, breeder cage. And uh, be some happy customers when they come to pick it up. Just a little something I like to do for folks. Um, I've always had a knack for light mechanics and especially uh, wood shop. You know, I took that when I was in high school. I don't think they offer that now in school today. Um, but my dad was a man who loved to build things on the weekends, and I always enjoyed uh, helping out around the house as a young kid. And it's just something that stuck with me. I love uh, building things. And, um, let me flip the camera around here. So, move the tripod out of the way here. Bear with me, and I'll give you a little sneak peek of a video coming up. Yes, yeah, so a little warm in here. Uh, got the heat on in here, and uh, it feels good in the garage. <laughs> so, but um, I've been taking it easy, not getting over exhilarated. So everybody just. Uh, know that I'm I'm not doing anything I'm supposed to be not doing uh but I you know I'm, I can't lay down and just give up uh and I've heard that from a lot of y'all you know you keep moving forward uh don't give up don't quit so and trust me that is very very encouraging and I won't I won't give up but this is uh a boat that I'm working on uh about to finish up uh um, I ain't got much left to do on it um just some nets some riggings, uh, gotta get the doors put on. I don't know if you guys, let me turn it around. I don't know if you can see the guide wires uh, on these boats, but uh, anyway. The Christina Lee, uh, beautiful boat. Nothing fancy, you know. Uh, you know, you might see a couple more in the background right here. These are all boats that I did months ago and uh, I know a lot of you say you should do videos uh, on these these are something that really takes some time um, it is a way to offset the income uh, especially uh, me not being able to work right now and drive truck but all these boats have been paid for months ago and uh, in advance and they're all ready they're all ready for shipping and um, I just haven't gotten to do it yet, but I will. And uh, they are beautiful boats, guys. Um, I wish I could pull them all out and let you individually look at them. But this is the uh, Christina Lee. She is the one I'm working on at the moment. Give you a little 
shot of it. But anyway, uh, guys, that's the uh, chick brooder. The quail brooder cage with the clean out tray. Um, to be honest with you, it's not a lot of money to build these. Just some time and a little know-how. I hope this video was somewhat helpful to anyone who wants to watch how to build one of these. Um, if not, uh, if you have any questions, drop a comment. I will definitely do my best to respond back and uh, share any uh, good advice with you that I can. Uh, thanks for watching Outdoors with Tim. I know this is a little long video, but I enjoy making these videos, and I enjoy bringing you guys along uh, with me. So uh, God bless y'all. Until next time. Do something for somebody good. You might make them smile, and you might just make their day. God bless y'all. We love y'all.